Hello. Horizontes was a 2017 Night Cities Challenge winner that aimed to connect two underrepresented communities in Wichita, Kansas, the predominantly Latino North End and historically African-American Northeast neighborhood. Today, we are here with Alexis Riviere for this Horizontes conversation. Alexis was one of the artists for our Summer Mural Jam in 2018 and created a mural that is located at 2130 North Market B, the second mural there. Alexis is an interdisciplinary artist and 2018 MFA recipient in art from Wichita State University who constructs visual narratives that investigate memory, identity, representation, and the social implications of race in the United States. Welcome, Alexis. Thank you, Mason. Thank you all for having me. And it's quite a joy to be able to talk about this project three years later. Um, three years. Um, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Can you tell us a little bit about you as an artist and your background there? Sure. So as you noted, um, I received my MFA in painting while at Wichita State. Um, I started as someone who draws. That's how I got into art as a young girl. Um, and then over time, you know, school and life and academic, it changes you and it changes your pursuits. And so I got into painting, abstract painting. And then as a graduate student, I actually began to explore performance art, um, textiles, so making masks. And then kind of realized that I kind of like layering these different things together. And so basically my paintings are now these masks that are comprised of fabric for my clothing and there's paint and there's gems and things that have come together. And then I wear those in performance and create narratives through storytelling. So these characters evoke story. Um, I've done several murals also um, in the Midwest and so um, I wasn't a stranger to murals before the Summer Mural Jam. And it, for me, it's a great opportunity to continue my painting process. So whenever an opportunity comes up, um, if I can continue to paint, um, you know, that is always welcome. So yeah, painter slash everything kind of artist. Yeah, absolutely. So your, during your, your, your graduate degree was your only time in Wichita. Mm -hmm. What was it about this call for artists or this project that that drew you in originally? Mm. So I I remember that the call was connecting two communities, um, specifically, you know, North End. And then I had, was a resident of the Fairmount neighborhood. And so for me, um, I love the idea of bringing these two communities together. Um, allowing us to share dialogue in a variety of ways, but also to create a community awareness um, to kind of bring some some artists from those communities, give us opportunities to, you know, stretch our, our artistic creative abilities, and then also maybe bring, um, create opportunities, right? And so if can a mural, can this type of project create, you know, opportunities for, I don't know, engagement, you know, create dialogue, um, and so I was interested in if, if there if there was a way that I could be a part of that in some capacity. So yeah. And you were in a really beautiful way. Let's go ahead and pull up your mural, and then we can give the the mural to text description. Uh, so will you walk us through each part of your mural. Absolutely. So my mural is built. I would say, so I mentioned before, um, a background in abstraction. So thinking about structure was important for me. And so I knew that I, as an African-American woman, was looking for um, an opportunity to bring a powerful female identifying kind of character to the, to the forefront. Um, so for me, I wanted to create a grounded structure. And so that's why there are these kind of rectangular forms that kind of anchor the mural. Um, this idea of community in a circular way. And so the circles kind of represent um, uh, like a wholeness, a unity. Um, and then also bringing in the kente cloth patterns and then kind of a shout out to Wichita's um, sunflowers, your amazing, beautiful sunflowers that you all have in Kansas. And then, you know, once again, having this dynamic figure who's rocking their afro boldly and you know their head is kind of pointed to the sky so they can kind of hold themselves in a way that reads of power with the hope that people would be able to see themselves in this entity and feel like they too 
could have that kind of lead, that kind of power and uh, fierceness. So that was the goal. Absolutely, and I think, and I think you, you absolutely achieved that goal. Do you want to talk any about the, the color palette or the color choice or the specifics there? Yeah, so it's gonna sound uh, basic, but just thinking about, if, you, if you're looking at the mural, you'll notice that a lot of what's coming together are these series of compliments, right? And so in the, the far left half circle where there's this kente cloth, kente cloth pattern, um, that pattern was sourced, like I sought out that pattern. I found kente cloth, various forms on the internet, and then wanted to really bring, you know, this African diaspora to the table. So, um, but that pattern, like in painting it, the color choices, that orange and the blue was about bringing those compliments together. So when you're bringing two compliments together, you can create energy. Right. And so you see that also happening with the middle circle, this red and green coming together, creating more energy in that capacity. And then also there's the yellow and the purple. So all of these are these complementary colors that are coming next to, to their, their opposite on the color wheel. Um, the, in, the intention is to create um, energy, liveliness. And even with that teal, you know, that teal in and of itself has that capacity, right? And so, um, yeah, I really wanted something that was eye-catching. Um, and then not your traditional, like it's a sunflower, but it's not yellow, right? It's more of an orangey. And so like really trying, well, and, and part of that is balance. So realizing like there are these larger yellow color blocks, right? And so it can create some more um, contrast and balance by adding a more of an orangey kind of sunflower um, instead of, like your traditional yellow. So really thinking about it more in a color theory capacity, um, yeah, as to why those choices were made. Very nice. Let's back up and talk a little bit about the process. Um, so we have a simple process photo here, but um, for our art students at home, what, are, what was your process from, from start to finish with this? Yeah, so for any painting, whether it's a mural or a, a canvas of sorts or mask, um, well, maybe not so much for the mask, but for, the, for anything that's like on a canvas or a support, like a wall, I tend to do, I don't sketch out my ideas. I tend to see my ideas in picture form and then I do a digital composite. So that's me taking, you know, reference photos either that I've taken on a camera or that I've found and appropriated from the internet. And typically when you're appropriating something from another source, you have to alter it like at least 75% for it to become something you can really utilize. And so I'm altering these things digitally in Photoshop and layering and combining. And so for me, the kind of intuitive standpoint is in Photoshop, that's when I'm kind of at that playful sketch stage. Mm -hmm. um, and so I found the composition in that, in that, in that form. Um, and then for me, especially having done um, two murals prior, I knew with the scale of this mural, I would want and felt like I could render it best if I projected the mural. And so the first day of our um, mural fest, our first evening, um, came together and myself and some volunteers, you know, took a projector and projected it up and was able to, to get, and, and I, I will say this from, you know, if you're drawing, it's one thing to like need that fluidity of like the humanity touch, but when you're painting a mural, you can, even if you use a more tactical standpoint of like, I projected this, that like painterly touch comes through the brushworks and what you're doing beyond that. And so for me, um, I knew that I could get, you know, quickness, accuracy, and we only had a week. <laughs> so it was like, how do I not spend all the time trying to make sure my circles were perfect? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we projected it. And then another, maybe, I don't know how this worked for other people, because I know people were using spray paint and, and things, and that's not really my forte. But because I have a color theory and a painting background, most of these colors were mixed. So when the call came out and um, we were asked for like our color selections, because for paint, um, I picked colors knowing what would mix well to create these colors. So oftentimes, you know, whether it's my, so wow, this is weird to think about, like having to recount the memory. While people were helping, it's like, oh, I need more of this teal. And they'd have to hand it off, you know, to me and I'd have to make the teal. And then they, you know, could work on that section. So 
um, each of the colors that you see here were hand mixed um, to create. So I had, a, you know, my map, which was the Photoshop, you know, composite, which is a photograph, and then mixing those colors um, together to make what you have here. So, yeah. yeah. I, and even this, I noticed that in this, in this photo here, you have this lighter blue at the top that in the end yeah. ends up being yellow. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember making that that change or that choice? I do. I, you know, there was a slight change in my design. And so there was what was interesting was originally there were these borders. There's a top border and a bottom border where the like purple, yellow, purple maybe alternates. And there was this kind of rainbow-esque. All of the colors you see here were kind of going in and out. And so between the time constriction and like trying it with spray paint, remember I said I wasn't so great at <laughs> spray paint. Yeah. Um, you know, so uh, I think it was Armando, he, he was like, hey, try it out. So I tried out the spray paint and I tried it and it was there, like the basic outline of what I was originally intending, this kind of color morph was there, but it wasn't working aesthetically. It was very jarring. Um, and so, that actually is kind of a reduction of like removing something that just wasn't really working. Um, even so it's an example of when you try something, you may have an idea and you try it and it doesn't work. And so you have to take alternative right. um, path, but yeah. And it's okay to make those changes as you're going along, right? You that did, is true. You gave it your best attempt and said, yeah, this isn't working. Yeah. Let's pivot. Yeah. Next. That's a part of artistic license. That's a part of the discovery of the process. Um, so yeah, it would have been nice to have been able to work that out. I think if, if it wasn't, you know, we had a weak timeline, if we could do more, probably could have did it, but next time, <laughs> next time we'll try again. Do you, were there other parts that you remember changing from initial to end result? No, everything else is as it is on the um, original sketch. So yeah, there's, and part of that is, um, that plan is kind of, for me, it's like, you just kind of go with the plan, you know, if you can. Um, I think the the part that had to be altered was quite ambitious it, from a technical standpoint. And so like, it maybe would have taken a sponging and a this and, a, you know, figuring it, a, figuring it out. And it was at the end of the week when I got to that point. So I just ran out of time to work it out to the way that it needed to be. But everything else is as, as it was intended to be. I'll pull back up the other one. Um, yeah. Will you talk, and you, you've you touched on this a little bit, but what is it really in your, your story, your background community that was the inspiration for this mural here? Yeah. I do think you've touched on that, but just succinctly. For sure. So for me, I clearly remember, and, and I will contextualize this with, I was just finishing my graduate degree, which was looking at, specifically creating work about black female as in the large experience. Um, starting with my personal narrative and then many people having the capacity to maybe see themselves in that. And so after having just uh, had a resolution with that body of work, um, it felt really natural to continue that conversation of empowering women, uh, women identify people, Black women, uh, people of the African diaspora as a whole. And so it's interesting because even though I lived in the Fairmount neighborhood, my mural is in the North End, right? And I was not from that part of town, but it gets to have this greater connect. Like if you're thinking about this idea of connectivity, bringing the two neighborhoods together, right? Someone technically from the other side of town is coming into to the other part of the neighborhood but being able to say, hey, listen, I want to give you an empowering image. I want to give you something that you can see yourself in. Um, having like the black hair conversation is very important for um, people of the African diaspora and our hair comes in many different textures. And, and so oftentimes historically an Afro is not something that has been um, acceptable in the workplace, et cetera. And so like making sure that you can um, remind people that this is not just a powerful, you know, part of your hair, but it's your hair. If you have your hair like this, you can wear it and you can feel free. And blending that with the, the beauty and the power of a sunflower and having those two things kind of be a mirror for one another, um, which I thought was a beautiful read and being able to allow like 
when I think of a sunflower and how they like any flowers most times are pointing up to the sun creating connecting with the energy source of the sun and like taking that in right from a life source and so like having that read into this into this um, female identifying character and having that be someone who's now emboldened and empowered um, I really wanted to be able to communicate that and so um, I know at the close of the project, um, you know, I got at least one person who sent me an image online and was like, you know, posed with the picture and was able to say, like, I saw myself in this mural. And that was a beautiful moment because what you never know how it connects to people. Um, but when you find out that someone can say, I felt empowered, I saw myself represented with when re representation of, you know, Afro-Latinas, African-Americans in general, is kind of hard to find oftentimes. So when you can give that, um, it's a beautiful, you know, moment for sure. Absolutely right. Taking a, a blank wall and, mm. and then allowing that to be a place for someone to see themselves. There's, it's exactly why we do what we do. Absolutely. We did. Uh, so on that, on that theme, how was it received by the, the community? Like during Summer Mural Jam, we talk about some of those conversations. And I think now we can start also kind of bringing in the idea of, of Afro-Latina here mm -hmm. in this neighborhood as well. For sure. So I, as far as I know, historically in my genetic code, I am African-American. And so it's an interesting um, position to be in to give a mural into a community that you were not raised in. Um, and so for me, I found there were moments where I'd be painting and someone would come up to me in like a Spanish dialect and I would just say, ah, I'm sorry. I don't know how to like finish this conversation with you. You, you know, you engage as much as you can, but you realize that people were at one receiving me as their own. So they were assumptive that, oh, you must be Afro-Latina. You know, you're bringing us this wonderful, gorgeous, you know, Afro-Latina woman on the, on the wall. And I was like, I'm sorry. I just want to bring that to you, but I'm not of that community. And so it was a beautiful melting and opportunity to bring those two communities together, in my opinion. Um, I think that Afro-Latinas should be seen and oftentimes, and, and from what I'm learning in community, maybe doesn't always get the representation, this idea that you can be both of African descent and Latin descent. Um, and so like, if you can be able to um, remind people like, they exist, people exist, you know, um, that is important. I definitely feel like from the overall Summer Mural Jam perspective, um, I remember a lot of the community really, especially if they were just naturally walking down the street, really getting engaged, people were pulling up and stopping and having conversations. Um, and so it was a really special um, opportunity to be able to tell people, you know, what your intentions are with the mural and make sure that people know, like, you know, I may not be from the community, but I'm wanting to bring you something that you can feel proud of. And you can see if, if you relate to this um, story, you can find yourself in it, you know. So, yeah, definitely. Hopefully that's the read that people have. Do you want to talk a little bit about being between these two? Because there are three murals right here in mm -hmm. this in this little quadrant. What was it like working between these two other artists? Yeah, so I don't, so the artist to the left of me, if I remember correctly, was of Native American descent. And then the artist to the right of me, which you can see a clip of, was of Latin descent. Um, and so it was interesting. We, we each got to talk to each other about the intents and the purposes within our murals. Um, we each got to encourage each other and make sure that we all knew, you know, I don't know. It was it was a good bonding moment. I feel like between the three murals, you have three groups of people represented that oftentimes historically are kind of getting the short end of the stick in the United States, right? Mm -hmm. Specifically, since we are in the United States. Um, and so it's a unity standpoint, in my opinion, circular in a way or triangular in that, in like abstractly, there's three of us, right? And so those structures were coming together and being able to stand in unity, um, be visible, which is highly important. 
um, and encouragement, you know, both for ourselves as makers, as, as communal artists, but also for others. In many ways, you know, as the people who are working while you're working, you are, you are the on-site representative of who you're presenting, right? And so having those dialogues with people who will pull up, um, yeah, like you got to, at least for a moment, you know, share the messages that you were putting forth. So it was good. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Um, so as a, as a kind of a, a part of this larger whole, it's not that you three pull, um, planned your murals together. I mean, they were, they were designed as three separate murals, right. but what is, what is your hope as, as people today now pass by three years later, mm. what do you hope that they see in this series of murals here? What do you hope is, is their takeaway when they do pass by? Oh man, what should their takeaway be? I'm also like thinking, I know that the mural to the left is not shown on the screen, Yeah. Um, but just thinking about it, I'm, you know, if you're reading it and you're walking from either direction, um, you're encountering, they all have um, like human representation, if that makes sense. Um, they all have figures in them. Um, so they're all intentionally wanting you to connect on a humanity level, not just like a feelings level abstractly, even though that is a part of it. Um, so I want people when they're walking down the street to, to seek their humanity, to seek their power, to seek their liberty. I would be one to say I'm not the best at reading Spanish, but I see Libertad, I think. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ruin the language, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, let me um, but I think I'm reading that as liberty on the screen. Yeah, liberty like does not need wings. What it needs mm. is to, to put down roots. Right, see, so this idea, and I, I know the mural to the left is not shown, was articulating and was, communicating um, some of the icons that are that are not always so flattering. Oh, well, there's some, but this is not finished. Finished, right. This is yeah. finished, but it was it was that, right? So the yeah. portraiture has then different caricatures of Native American identity, and then each of them are, are crossed out. out. And we have uh -huh. um, the Native American representation as it should be then here on the left. In the For sure. So in this image, you know, he's bringing or they're bringing you empowering images but also reminding us what what is not shown here but in the final mural reminding us you know not to disrespect culturally right taking out certain things that we need to think about and we need to challenge in our culture and then you're moving to like mine and i'm talking about you know being bold and keeping your head held high and like mm -hmm. empowering yourself and each other and then this idea of liberty, like, like in the freedom of wing, like I, I really want people to have their fullness in their humanity, to be able to feel um, empowered and emboldened to know that they exist, they can exist as who they are, and they can stand up, right, for that Afro or for like, we don't need to have this representation that I don't want, like you, you have that power. And I think each of us are talking about power, humanity, like being really seen as humans. Um, having right and access and, you know, liberty. That's all many of us want at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. I'm, you know, I, I don't know that these were, three were necessarily intentionally planned together, but I think everything that you said they do, they just go so well together. And that story does go beyond that. Um, it's interesting now, you are in New York now, and mm -hmm. we were talking beforehand, um, the idea of the Afro-Latina identity and how that is now put on you in ways as you're, as you're walking through these different communities, yeah. being a part of that. Um, and I, I think that representation in Wichita is, is so wonderful to see. Like we have all of these students from North High that are going to go between the neighborhoods and it is so wonderful for them to be able to see themselves here. And so I really thank you for putting that representation out there. Um, Right, because even though it is not yours, like you said in that, those posts that you receive, it's just so important. Yeah, and contextually, I may not personally be African, Afro-Latina, but this image can serve for someone who is Afro-Latina, right? Um, it serves for anyone in the African diaspora. 
-hmm. And the intention is always that whether you relate directly or you're someone of a different community, we are establishing respect, we're establishing the power, right, that we all should be able to have. So yeah, hopefully that that's reading and people people are getting the energy that people infuse into the murals, right? The positive energy is hopefully radiating back into the community. Absolutely. What were some, some learning moments or impactful moments from your actual mural production? Oh, wow. So big learning moment, we've kind of touched on, so I won't draw out on it too much, but artistically as a maker, like the fail of the project for me was when it didn't, finally end up in the way that it was originally drawn to be, right? Sketched to be. So that rainbow-esque header and footer, bottom border. When that didn't realize, I was like, ah, like fail. Um, You always intend, you know, it's like finishing the assignment. It's like, I didn't finish the assignment. Um, It's how it felt originally. Sometimes maybe still feels that way. Um, So the, the fail was in realizing that better planning on my part, right? Even how you could resolve something, like how you being myself could resolve something like that in the future is like, I tried spray paint, it didn't work out because it was really like, imagine color that's like bleeding into one another, right? And so that's a technique thing. And it's one thing to do that on a canvas, it's another thing to do that at a scale on a wall. And so like for me, what could have made that succinct or more resolved would have been testing different things. Like if time had allowed, that would have been me like with sponges and like trying to really resolve how to make it work. So I think the challenge in the learning curve was planning. Like sometimes, sometimes more planning is necessary. And then sometimes knowing like you have to pivot, right? So that that was a lesson. Um, I think for me, one of the most impactful parts of the experience was community on so many different levels. So first and foremost, I noted that the physical community, surrounding community, and people from across town were driving in and out, were walking down the street, were interacting with us, were excited to learn about the project. I think I lost my mic, sorry. We're excited to learn about the project, but also um, what what our stories were respectively across the board. Um, And so that was, encouraging as someone who's making, but also um, community in the aspect of the people who helped with the production, right? So I can't think of one person who like just did it entirely, like from top to bottom by themselves. There was community exchange between artists. We're giving, you know, we're hanging out and talking, but in those you're giving of yourself to one another. And then the people who helped me with my mural particularly, like Shout out to them. I made new friends and connections through that. Um, friends that I had built over the years at Wichita were like showing up and helping out. Um, there was a night where it like rained and the, <laughs> then we like tarped my mural and like people piled under and like helped me paint. Uh, and so like the murals would not happen without literal community and people coming together to move it forward. And so like the gratitude beyond that And the energy of that, because it then becomes not just my intention to put forth something, but a true collective community spirit, right? And so, you know, it it may be labeled as my mural, but like so many people came together to make that manifest. And so it it becomes our mural, becomes our story, our conversation. So yeah, that's that's one of the most positive experiences that I had was to see like how community work. And like, just a quick note, like people, we were fed, like people were coming together to like feed us and like keep us going, you know what I mean? So like, mm-hmm. like when I say community, like the way when you see people show up and support one another, like that was the experience. So it was good. Mm-hmm. How does this mural fit into other work that you've produced? You mentioned that you've done two oh. murals prior to this, and now it doesn't sound like you've done a mural since. So how does this fit into yeah. your larger body of work? So I will say I was scheduled to do a mural since that didn't happen, but that's another story. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so the two murals before this <clears throat> were not usual to my body of work. So I did another community-based project that was about making sure that people, it was like a storm drain painting and making sure that people knew not to, to pour stuff down the storm drains. Yeah. It impacts the fishes in your water, right? right? Or the fish in your water, sorry. Um, but then also, 
uh, the other one was like a carousel mural had nothing to do it had to do with the site right there yeah. it was for right. so this was one of the mur- the first times that a mural got to touch more into the thematic considerations of my yeah. work um but i will say that since then, the paintings that I have produced, which I don't produce many paintings anymore, but when I do, when I'm commissioned to produce paintings, I actually have made this declarative, like I make paintings of Black women, mm-hmm. right? And so if you were to see any of the commissions that I've done, um, they all include empowered Afrocentric diaspora um, imagery. And so when I get to paint, I'm wanting to serve the community and make sure the representation is there um, so yeah, that's how it's now fitting into my larger context. Any future murals will always have um, some type of a tie into the Black experience as a whole. Yeah. So, is is would you like to do do more murals? Is that an avenue that you want to pursue more of? I love, love, love. First of all, they're just giant paintings, and so in many ways, they stretch you, they push you past your limits, like. We've already discussed how, like, I was pushed past my limits. Um, and and they, I don't know, there, there is not the same working process as working on a smaller canvas, for example. Right. And so you just have to think different. You have to problem solve differently. I absolutely love a mural. So if, I don't know if I, sh- is like thinking about, I don't want to jinx my life, <laughs> but I've always said that every place that I've lived, I wanted to make a mural. Right. And so that is true at up to this point. You know, I had a mirror in my hometown and where I went to undergrad and where I went to graduate school. And so I intend to everywhere I go, make that kind of physical mark into the world. So, yes, I will be making more murals in the future. Yeah. Right. And, and I think that difference between a canvas painting and a mural, it hits on that idea of community where you can't do this. You, you can do a canvas painting by yourself without needing others help necessarily but with a mural especially the bigger it gets Mm -hmm. it just becomes more and more and more difficult yeah more futile to try to do it by yourself and not include the help of those around you that's true it's a disadvantage to seek that pursuit by yourself Mm -hmm. and when you're establishing something in a neighborhood like why should I put my just my stamp on the neighborhood like why not allow collective input why not like that mural was still rendered very tight to, you know, what the image was. But a a lot of times when a community is coming together to do this kind of work, people get to have their input and their say, you know? And so oftentimes it's like, it literally becomes like a patchwork quilt, even though it's a painting Mm -hmm. in, in that way. Like I didn't make every single mark on that. In fact, the most, like the woman in the circle is the only space where I painted that by myself. So everywhere else, there's other handprints and there's other brush marks. And so that energy is literally being trans- transformed and feuded into the work. Um, so yeah, like it's always a community effort and that's that's what's necessary. It's, a, it's, you know, art in the world, right? Like these murals that are in the world, they uplift us. You driving down the street, you didn't think about it, but it is impacting your day to day. And so like, you want that to be a community effort. You want that energy out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Uh, will you, um, I think you have, but yeah, just two final questions, really. Um, so it has been three years since mm-hmm. you've made a move. You've hit on it a little bit, but do talk more really about where you are artistically now and, and some of that work since. So you've made a pivot. Um, what can you tell us more about yeah. that? Yeah, I've made a pivot in in a lot of ways, actually, as I'm thinking about it. So like a physical pivot, I've I've moved twice in the macro sense. So I moved home instantaneously and now, and then almost three years later or two and a half years later, I moved to New York. Um, And so that changes your work. Um, And as a person who was working as more of a performance artist Mm -hmm. um, in the Midwest, the way that I would approach that is very different than in a large city, right? And as you were talking about community, it's becoming more and more clear that in order to execute the work that I make, um, I have to not try to attempt it to do it on my own, but to bring more and more people to the, you know, to the collective idea of bringing forth the idea. So if I'm shooting something, I maybe need, if I'm the performer, I maybe need a videographer, right? I maybe need someone who's assisting with 
all different capacities of the piece. And so now I'm realizing, and it's weird because I think a lot of New York art happens in that way. And so I'm coming to realize how communal things are. Yeah. Um, and maybe I needed to have that shift to have that happen. But also thematically right now, um, the work that I'm currently making is a lot about self-care. Um, there's research on this, so you can look it up if you like. But I'll say it this way, when it comes to Black women historically, um, self-care is like the last thing that we've been allowed to have. You're usually caring for other people, um, especially from the African-American perspective. And so an experience. So um, to create work about ritual, um, what that looks like from a self-care perspective, I know that's a buzzword right now, but um, that's that's like zip tying a bunch of words into a small space. Um, but wellness, right? And, and culture. And so for me, um, and like culture in the sense of like, not just your personal wellness, but the, com the capacity of bringing your personal wellness with collective community wellness. So that's been the focus. So my, my characters have been exploring those in the stories, um, those topics in their, in their story right now. Um, so yeah, it's, it's still the same work, but it's changed a little bit. You know, anyone else have any ideas of murals? <laughs> you know? You know, I'm always down, but yeah, there will be future works in that capacity also. Mm -hmm. And to wrap up with that essential question that this project was built around, mm -hmm. what is on your horizon, Alexis? What are, what are you what are you working towards? What are you working on? Oh my, that's a big question. Mm -hmm. What is on my horizon? So I have like this pursuit of purpose. And for me, that means that everything I do. So I, you know, I'm, I'm an interdisciplinary artist. I'm an educator. I teach um, art. I also like have other jobs. And, um, but also like I'm a human and I have community and friends and family. And so like everything that I do is centered around encouraging other people, is centered around inspiring other people um, and has since actually like also mirroring that for myself. So as I'm giving that, you have to refill that. So for me, I'm just wanting to be able to establish those things more, establish more art that can inspire to show people themselves, to create dialogue, um, create more education opportunities so that people can find their creative self, you know, and express that in whatever capacity that means. And yeah, just keep growing, always keep growing. So. Wow. Thank you. Well, again, this was our conversation with Alexis Riviere, one of our artists for our summer mural jam in 2018. You can see Alexis's mural located at 2130 North Market in between two others. Uh, Thank you, Alexis. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your you. Thank you for your conversation. We really appreciate you. I appreciate you all too. Thank you very much.